This is a review video for peripheral blood smear examination and white cell identification. When assessing blood cell morphology, it's important to locate a suitable area on the smear for examination. In a wedge or bullet shaped smear, the area towards the tail end is too thin. And I'll show you what that looks like here. So you'll notice that the red cells are arranged in a cobblestone pattern and the red cells also have no area of central pallor and they take on a distorted shape. So not the typical circular or round shape you'd expect red cells to look like. At the opposite end of the smear, the cells are too thick. The red cells are overlapped and they stain too darkly. A good area for blood cell examination would be an area where the red cells are evenly distributed with evidence of central pallor, which we see here. So now that we're in a correct area for blood cell examination, let's take a look at some of the white cells and identify them. Remember to look for distinguishing features in the cells that will help out with the identification. Consider the three features of the cells, the nucleus, the cytoplasm, and the granules. You'll want to think of each of these three features in terms of their color, character, and amount of each. So let's take a look at this cell here. Notice that you can look at the cell where my mouse cursor is, or if you look at the bottom right corner of your screen, you'll see a magnified version of the cell. So think of, thinking of this cell in terms of the nucleus, you'll see that our, there are three segments or lobes to that nucleus. And looking at that nuclear chromatin, it's quite dark and clumpy. The cytoplasm looks like it's a pale pink color. And if you look closely, you'll see that there are a bunch of small or fine lavender colored granules. And so this cell is a neutrophil. So anytime you see a cell with segmented or a lobed nucleus, chances are it's going to be a granulocyte. So granulocytes include the neutrophils, eosinophils, or basophils. So let's look at this cell down here. So it's kind of hard to see the nucleus but it looks like there are two segments or lobes to this nucleus and there is some dark purple chromatin. The granules, those are the distinguishing features of this cell. You can see that they're quite large and they stain a very dark purple to black color. So this cell is a basophil. Let's take a look at another field and let's look at this cell here. Looking at the nucleus, there are two segments or two lobes to this nucleus, so we can call this a bilobed nucleus. The chromatin also looks quite condensed. If you look closely at the cytoplasm, it's a pale pink color. There are large orange colored granules. So with this lobe nucleus and an abundance of large granules. We think this is a granulocyte and its identity is an eosinophil. And what about this cell here? The nucleus is irregularly shaped. The nuclear chromatin is lighter staining with more delicate chromatin compared to the other three cells that we've already seen. The cytoplasm looks opaque. It's got a bit of a ground glass appearance due to the, the very, very fine, tiny looking granules. And this cell also contains vacuoles where all those uh, white circles are. So this cell is a monocyte. Okay, so we've moved to another field with another view of different cells. Let's look at this one here. So this cell here has a very round nucleus with very dark chromatin. Um, there are some, some darker pycnotic patches in there. And 
and there's a very small amount of blue cytoplasm. This overall cell size is not very big. This is a small lymphocyte. Looking at this cell here, the nucleus looks like it's an oval shape, though the cell is compressed by the surrounding red cells a little bit. The chromatin in that nucleus looks a medium purple and it's quite homogeneous. And on the right hand side you see that there are just a few medium purple or azurophilic colored granules. And looking at the cytoplasm, it's a clear, um, transparent blue color. So this is a large lymphocyte. Now that we've gone through the typical white blood cells that you would see in a peripheral blood smear, let's try to identify the rest of the white cells on this field here. Let's take a look at this one. I'll give you a few seconds to try to identify it on your own. Remember to keep in mind that when identifying cells, to take a look at the nucleus, the cytoplasm, and the granules. Okay, so what did you think the cell was? I'll go through the nucleus with you. This nucleus has th three or four lobes to it. The cytoplasm is a light pink color and there are, there's an abundance of lavender colored granules in there. So this cell is a neutrophil. Did you get that right? Okay, let's move on to this cell here and I'll give you another few seconds just to take a look at the uh, three main cell components. Okay, so this cell here, it's got a round nucleus with some very dark pycnotic looking chromatin and there's a small amount of blue cytoplasm. And this overall cell, it's just slightly larger than, than the size of the surrounding red blood cells. So this cell here is a small lymphocyte. Down here is another small lymphocyte. So if you take a look at the nucleus there, uh, that nucleus isn't as nicely rounded as the other two small lymphocytes that we just looked at. This one has a slight notch to it, and that can be one of the features of the nucleus of a small lymphocyte as well. Again, small amount of blue cytoplasm, and overall it's a small cell. Over here we have a neutrophil. So this cell again has a segmented nucleus with clumped pycnotic chromatin, an abundance of pale lavender colored granules and the pink cytoplasm. So that makes up the neutrophil. Down here we have a large lymphocyte. So this large lymphocyte, um, you could see a nucleolus in there, just in the middle of that um, nucleus there. But the chromatin, it's very homogeneous, a medium purple color. If you take a look at the cytoplasm, you don't see any granules in there. But the cytoplasm is a light blue color, and it's pretty clear and transparent. Uh, sometimes if the red blood cells are compressing the edges of that cytoplasm, there's um, a little bit of a darker blue rim there. So this is a large lymphocyte. Okay, so we'll take a look at one more field. I'll have you take a look at this cell here and try to identify that based on the nucleus, the granules, and the cytoplasm. And I'll give you a few seconds to take a look at that. All right, going over the features of this cell, looking at the nucleus, it's quite irregular in shape. The chromatin within that nucleus is pretty delicate looking uh, and pale staining. Looking at the cytoplasm, it's got a bit of a ground glass appearance, an opaque cytoplasm, and we see a few, uh, quite a few small vacuoles in there. 
Another thing we see in the cytoplasm of this cell is that on the bottom corner here, uh, right there, it looks like it's extending a pseudopod out. So this cell here is a monocyte. Over here we have another monocyte. So similar features to that previous cell in terms of the irregular nucleus, the opaque looking um, cytoplasm, and the presence of vacuoles. Here's another neutrophil, and here's a small lymphocyte. So this small lymphocyte again has a clefted or a notched nucleus. And it looks like there are a couple of distorted or broken cells here. This looks like remnants of a neutrophil. And then at the other end here, it looks like a, a broken cell. We don't see any cytoplasm there, so it's, it'll be difficult to identify. So this concludes the peripheral blood examination tutorial and cell identification review. I hope that this has helped you in your review as well.